I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about cladding, if you'll allow me. And let's catch up on this. We've spoken a lot about this on this programme, and rightly so. The Fire Safety Bill for England is returning to the Commons later today. It was introduced to strengthen regulations following the Grenfell Tower fire. Now, earlier this month, the government announced that it was putting £3.5 billion more towards removing unsafe cladding from buildings which are taller than 18 metres. And that takes it to around £5.1 um, billion pounds in the total fund. There's money to deal with the actual cladding, but flat owners are pointing out they're still facing costs of up to £50,000 for other safety issues. And two MPs are planning to put forward an amendment around this. Now, one of those is Conservative MP Stephen McPartland, who we've spoken to on this programme um, many times before. Stephen McPartland, good morning. Good morning, Naga. Morning. So tell me what's on this bill. So um, today, um, we're actually debating it in the Commons. It's called Ping Pong Stage. So um, we'll actually be um, hoping to vote on our amendment today, um, whether we get time or not, up to the government. And um, what there's some um, procedural bits and pieces. But we'll be making the point in our speeches today that leaseholders should not have to pay for historic fire safety defects. So a lot of these leaseholders, you've had them on your programme, yeah. you know, they were in primary school when um, these buildings were erected and um, they were signed off as safe and now they're being told that um, they weren't safe and they may have bills of forty, fifty thousand pounds And although the government and the Treasury have moved forward and put some funds up, um, we've never asked for taxpayers' money ourselves or the leaseholders. All we've ever said is that those responsible should pay and our view is the government should So the provide construction companies? Yeah, construction companies, building insurance, building regulators, there's a huge number of people involved. And our view is that the government is the only organisation with the money and cash flow to put the funds up front to get these fire safety defects fixed. And then they the only organisation who can then put levies on these organisations to recoup that money over the next 10, 15 years. So um, that's, that's what we've been aiming for. The situation at the moment, though, is that at the moment, leaseholders, flat owners are going are paying out huge amounts of money to remedy these costs before this government money comes through. Yeah, I mean, even before um, we get to these costs, I mean, you've had them on your programme. I have yes. um, thousands of them every week. You know, they're paying up to £15,000 a week for waking watchers, and that's where they have two to four people awake 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, and to evacuate them if there's going to be a fire. And I think it's heartbreaking because a lot of these um, leaseholders, you know, they don't have the funds. And we've already, um, you've spoken to people on your programme who've gone bankrupt already and we've already got them in huge financial difficulties and when the remediation work starts that's going to put huge bills on them so in today's bill um it's we're going to allow the freeholders to pass on the costs for fixing the outside of the buildings onto the leaseholders now the freeholders themselves don't have the cash to do it which is why with nearly four years on from grenfell and uh, not a lot has happened so it's very very difficult but the leaseholders don't have the cash to fix it either and that's going to mean a a lot more people will get into dif financial difficulty. So just tell me, so you're going to, if this is going to be, um, this amendment's going to be talked about today. Yes. Um, and you're not sure if the vote will happen. If that's the case, yeah, what can, but be, you know, what can be done? Yeah, I mean, as you know, Parliament's a very um, peculiar place sometimes, so it's our processes. So um, if, our if the government doesn't accept our amendment, which we hope they would, um, the government's not put forward their own amendment in lieu, which we hope they would. So um, if they don't allow us to vote on our amendment today, um, what we will do is, um, I'm pleased to announce the Lord Bishop of St Albans has agreed to table it in the Lords um, at the end of this week, and then it'll be discussed again in the Lords. So the no matter what happens, Naga, the campaign continues. No matter what happens today, leaseholders don't have to give up hope. Mm -hmm. We have an opportunity. It will be still spoken about. Um, Stephen McPartland, thanks very much, Conservative MP, for bringing me up to date with that. Um, I should say a Downing Street spokesperson has spoke, said to the BBC, I quote, we think the package we have come forward with is the right balance and will sort this issue for them and their constituents. Um, well, let's talk to Steph Pike. Steph owns a flat in a block in Bristol, um, and that flat has been deemed vulnerable to um, a fire spreading. So, Steph, morning to you. 
Morning, Naga. Um, I suppose there's some, um, uh, what's the word, assure, reassurement, reassure, reassurement that um, when I um, heard from Stephen that this conversation isn't going away, but the fact is you are in a, a certain situation with your flat and it is considered to be, to have fire safety issues. What's going on? Yeah, so um, my my block, I moved into it. Um, it was completed just after the Grenfell fire. So obviously when Grenfell would have been in the forefront of everyone's minds, including the developer. Um, and it's come to light over the last year or so that, um, well, it started with a bit of the combustible cladding. And then we've since had a load of reports and wall surveys carried out and um, it's come to light that there's numerous other fire safety defects. So um, flammable insulation, timber balconies and um, missing fire breaks and cavity barriers. Do you feel um, safe, Steph? I I did feel safe until last November um, when we had a waking watch put into effect um, immediately after one of the wall surveys. Um, so that's the 24 hour um, fire patrol wardens. Um, and, and now makes me feel like, oh, perhaps the building is actually um, obviously so unsafe that we either have to evacuate or have these um, fire wardens patrolling. So yeah, I, I'm not sure whether the building is actually that unsafe, but we're led to believe that it is. Hmm. Okay, and how much are you paying for the waking watch? Because that's an um, extra so, cost, isn't it? Yeah. So the waking watch costs four and a half thousand pounds per week. Um, we're very fortunate that so far those costs haven't been passed on to us, but um, we've been told that they are very likely to be coming our way soon. How much will that cost you? Do you know yet? I don't know exactly, but I, I, it's probably in the region of two to three hundred pounds extra per month added to the service charge, which uh, that's going to wipe out basically all of my um ec well extra money each month <laughs> do you have any faith in this fire safety bill going far enough to protect um, you for the, you guys for I, the future if if the vote goes ahead today and they by some miracle end up voting for the proposed amendments then Yes, that would be the best news ever, but I'm really not hopeful that it's going to, well, either going to go ahead after what Stephen McPartland was just saying, or if it does go ahead, um, I just don't think it has the Tory support that that is needed to pass it. And I just don't really understand why um, not all the MPs support it, because Essentially, well, I'll, they tell don't you, support... I'll tell you what they say. The government says it's put um, three and a half billion pounds extra towards removing unsafe yeah. cladding. Um, that's on top of a one point six billion pound fund for cladding removal uh, announced last year. Um, Rob Robert Jenrick, the housing minister, um, has spoken about this as well, and that's the justification. That's what the government says. Yeah. and and the the extra funding is of course completely welcome, and yeah, it's good. However, there are various issues with, with that, that announcement that aren't, well, the media do publicise them, but they're not openly spoken about by the MPs who have announced them. So, for instance, um, that extra three and a half billion only covers cladding removal from blocks that are over 18 metres. Mm -hmm. And it's also come to light that you can only access, I, I think this is correct, but I understand that you can only access that funding if it can be proven that the um, leaseholders or the building owner who will then pass the cost on to leaseholders can afford to pay for the rest of the fire safety defects at the same time. And obviously that's going to be completely unaffordable for the majority of people. I think the average bill is supposed to be around £25,000 on top of the cladding removal. Could so, you, Could you, I mean, you said it's going to eat into any spare money you have. How much longer if would you be able to continue paying for any well, extra think, costs that come your way? I don't, well, I I think my family would have, well, they would obviously try and support me all they can, but that would just be the way you watch costs. If we get handed with a bill for, I don't know, 25, 40,000 pounds, 
Um, and I know some blocks have been handed these bills and expected to pay them within 28 days. I, well, I couldn't afford that. And I don't, I don't know how anyone reasonably can. And I, I mean, many people have, I've got a professional qualification and if I have to file for bankruptcy, I lose that as well. So I, it's, we're just being put in an impossible situation and it's just taking up so much of my time and they're causing me so much stress and anxiety. And I'm, I consider myself as reasonably fortunate compared to a lot of people. I've, I'm not, I haven't got kids in the flat. I haven't, um, I'm not planning to move anytime soon. I ha- I've kept my job through the pandemic. I'm not currently struggling financially. And there's so many people in these tiny flats with kids that are struggling financially, have lost their jobs. And I just, oh, I just feel like despair for everyone. <laughs> Oh, Steph, I'm so sorry. I, sorry. I, 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 no, it's, I, look, don't say sorry. I can see you're upset. I can see you're upset. And I, I am genuinely very sorry. And um, hopefully we'll see the amendment to this bill. And hopefully there will be some resolution um, and movement. Um, Steph, will you stay in touch with yeah. us? Um, we'll yeah. make sure you're OK after this call as well. Um, but I think, you know, actually you're more upset for those who are in a less fortunate position than you. And <laughs> you're in a difficult position as well. So your um, empathy and understanding for what others are facing is, I think, what's making you even more upset. But yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Steph, thanks Thank for talking to much, me. Um, thanks for talking to me. Um, we'll, we'll stay on the line. We're just going to make sure you're OK when we come off the, when you come off the line to me. So um, look after yourself, Steph.